Hello and welcome to episode four of the Yearly Fantasy Challenge podcast powered by Leo the Prime. I'm Javi Gancedo, your host. Unfortunately, Frankie Sachs, our co-host, cannot be with us today. Uh, I hope he'll be with us very soon. But we have a special guest, uh, none other than last season's BKT Euro Cup Finals MVP, John Schurner. John, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. All right. Well, uh, we have to say that um, you're a big Fantasy Challenge fan, right? You've been playing for a lot of years. And uh, it's no accident that you're fir the first player that we invite to to, to this podcast. Yeah. A lot, uh, some of my teammates uh, from like uh, D.A. Colom and his brother and some of my teammate, uh, former teammates as well have really been into playing the fantasy challenge so they they got me into it so it's uh, a fun way to I'm a I'd like to think of myself as a basketball junkie so it's uh, a fun way to follow the game the funny thing is that you play the yearly fantasy challenge but you don't play the year cup fantasy challenge with the chance to to pick you as a player right uh, no I I prefer just as a fan just uh I you know what watching the Euro League and you know I, I like following basketball but I I think my uh the games I play in I'm just focused uh, on trying to win those games so I, uh, I I prefer just sitting on my couch and uh watching the Euro League games and following uh, all the different basketball games so uh -huh. and my my former teammates like I said they all uh they've enjoyed participating in the Euro League one so that's uh that's the one we That's and you go, you go like any other user, like right? when uh, somebody in a 20-point game scores a three-pointer at the buzzer and, and you have it on your team, you celebrate, right? <laughs> no, I, uh, no, I think uh, as a player, I, like, you know, whatever the outcome is, the outcome is. I know guys are, are giving their best effort, so it's never, uh, never frustrated or questioning uh, somebody's performance. I'm just, uh, just a fan and uh, it's a fun way to stay in touch with teammates to be honest we uh stay yeah. in group chats and things like that so no i never uh never get mad or frustrated i, I know how hard it is uh being a player and competing and some nights some nights it's your night some nights you know it might not be the, your best game so i i know guys are giving their best effort so i never uh, never get frustrated at performances that was going to be kind of my first my next question um Do you think that a lot of players uh, play Fantasy Challenge? And also, do you guys talk about it a lot? Uh, I don't know if too many guys play. I know, like a lot of, like I said, it's been a fun way to keep in touch with my former teammates. Just, uh, you know, we're, we all follow follow the Euro League, and um, it's a, a good way to stay in touch um, with, like I said, with the group chat and things like that. So um, I, don't, I don't know if a lot of guys play, but I know. I know everyone follows the Euro League, and this is just uh, a fun way to stay in touch with your teammates, talk a little trash to them. Um, it's uh, so no, it's it's all in good fun. All right. Well, it's round two of the regular season, and it's a uh, let's say we have an exception now because one of the games has been suspended: EA Seven Milan uh, or EA Seven Armani Milan against um, Maccabi Politica Tel Aviv. The game won't be played. And uh, we have uh, special circumstances, which are that players from these two teams will get their average score. What happens? That we only played one game until now. So everybody who played well last, last week will get the same score in round two. And that kind of conditions the game a lot, right? Because there were a lot of players who did really well. And I guess that a lot of people will, will keep them or, or buy them, right? Right, yeah. You have to... Uh strategize a little bit it changes changes how you go about things just due to um, unfortunate circumstances and the game being suspended um and you have to just go off their we their first week performance so it's you know like Miritic had a 38 valuation right um so if you automatically get can get 38 points and if you put them as your captain you're at 76 points right away um so that's i think if you're going into this week that's a strategy you definitely have to look at um finding a way to put him on your team 
Uh, I checked, and only eight players last season got a PAR of 39 or more. Uh, Besson Cup did it twice. Yeah. So it's very yeah. unlikely it can happen. And actually, if somebody takes uh, the risk and, and finds a player who scores more than, than 38, uh, he'll have a significant advantage over others. But it's not likely to happen. Yeah, absolutely. There's Obviously, there's a lot of really talented players in the EuroLeague, so it's, it's definitely possible. But a 38 valuation is... Uh, I think the if you're playing the the fantasy challenge game, the security of having those 76 points, uh, having a 38 valuation is uh, tough to pass up. Yeah. Uh, before I forget, also in the Eureka Fantasy Challenge, if you play the game between Hapal, Shlomo, Tel Aviv, and and the Wolves Vilnius has also been suspended. Same rule applies. Uh, mm, there are a lot of Hapal players who played really well and will have the same score as they did last week. Uh, I have a list here. Lorenzo Brown of Maccabi, 27.5. Josh Nebo, 25.3. Paul Katash, uh, 20. And Johannes Voitman, on, on less than 10 credits, 9.9. Uh, he got 21 of PAR. So players that you can choose and guarantee a good score. Uh, then, like you said, this is a terms of strategy. If you want to be conservative, you have a lot of options. If you want to risk, of course, you, you have the whole league to choose from. But um, uh, I guess that the wise thing to do is to go conservative, especially on the captain and on the coach, right? Yeah, I think uh, especially after only one week of play, uh, you know, you can't. Guys are still adapting to their team. I think there's uh, there could be a lot of a lot of change week by week here um, with these early performances. So I think to, like I said, to get a 38 valuation, uh, I think it's a little too tough to pass up on for me, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very difficult. And anybody who plays basketball, 38 of evaluation is almost impossible to get. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Not, so, bad, for a, not a bad performance for first. Uh, first yeah. Obviously, he would have liked to get the win. He, w- he didn't get the win, so that was he was an MVP. He, was, he had the highest PR of in round one, but uh, in the end, he didn't win the game, so that cost him yeah. the, the MVP. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at the team, which is going to be shown on the screen. 117 points. Okay. Uh, okay, you had Carson Edwards with minus six. You sent him to the bench, and then you put in Nigel Hayes-Davis, who had a minus five. Well, it happens. I mean, these are two players who are expected to do really well during the season, but they didn't have their best night right away. Yeah, it's one week. I think, uh, like I said, getting the season started, I think both those guys are really talented players. Um, you know, Hayes, Nigel Hayes Davis, uh, Euro League playoffs last year, playing every minute, I think, for some of those playoff games. Uh, like, Huge contributor, like he's a he's an awesome player and he's gonna do great things. Um, and Carson Edwards as well, uh, a guy coming from the NBA and you know adapting to a new system with Pablo Lasso. He's another really talented player. Like I said, it's only it's only one week. I think uh, those are both really talented players and are gonna gonna have great seasons. All right. Well, and and in my case, we're gonna see my team now. I, I score even lower, one hundred eleven. I have three teams. The other two scored around 160. This I'm following a different strategy, and uh, I didn't have. Uh, I mean, it looked really good uh, after Thursday because I had Abramovic and I had uh, Lovernier as team captain. But then I took yeah. a risk. I took the captain out of Lovernier, I put it on Shabon Shields, and then I had Campazzo who scored negative, and I had Brandon Davis who scored negative, and that uh, caused me to have a, a good score but uh i'm confident of course uh it depends on what i do this week but uh i can tell you i'm i'm gonna buy i'm gonna sell my three most expensive players uh yeah. which are campazzo uh brandon davis and Shavon shields and i'm gonna put okay. middle pitch i'm gonna put josh nebo and i'm gonna put coach katash instead of uh, dusko ivanovich who had 25 points last week thank you very much and then that's gonna be my team. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna be following what we said. Uh, I'm trying to look at who is my other my other team, my other because I didn't have enough money to put. Um, and then I chose Marcus Howard. So okay. 
that's going to be that's going to be my team uh, i mean capping it up is uh, marcus howard and abramovic moneke mirotic nivo with katash as head coach and then lavania six men and then in second round i have utkevichus josep puerto and adam hanga but like i said uh, Mirotic gets 76, Nibo gets 25, uh, Katash gets 20. That's uh, around 120 points. I'm getting with, like you said, I'm getting with three players and getting more points than I did with the entire team last last week. <laughs> yeah. It is what it is. And I guess you're just following the same, the same guidance, right? From what I heard. Yeah, I think given the game being suspended, you have to change your strategy a bit. I don't, I would have kept, I don't think I would have made the same changes had the game not been suspended, but due to the strategy of the game, I, yeah, I like similar to you, I went with Miritich and I added uh, Voigtman as well, given uh, his performance. Um, and like you said, I think a, a 9.9 value, it's um, good value for him. Um, and then, I think it was uh, this. I don't know what my other change was to be honest, but uh, look, without looking uh, at the lineup. But I have your team in front of me, and then you I have think I went with, uh, Abramovich for uh, Carson Edwards. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think uh, Abramovich being uh, his second year at Partizan under uh, Coach Abradovich, I think as a Good understanding uh, of his role and his teammates have a uh, good understanding of his game. That uh, I think he's a guy that's going to play a lot of minutes for them and uh, perform well. Yeah, we have a very similar starting lineup. You have Avramovic, Mirotic, Voitman, Moneke, and Lavernier with Kanan yeah. as six man and Katash as coach. Uh, the, the bench is very different with Mitru Long, Madar, of Fenerbahce, Mike Tobias Vesda. And Lavrinovich is also of Zagreb. So, but you have two very good uh, around the, uh, well, Mitru Long and, and Toby at 9.4 and 9.5. But like I said, uh, they may come off the bench and, and even give you more value, if, especially if Lavrinia and, and Abramovich don't have a good uh, game. So, yeah, it looks very solid, John. It looks pretty good. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, I think you always think it looks solid. Uh... Prior to the games, right? Uh, but yeah. uh, no, uh, I think uh, no. I, Toby is uh, a guy that I think is going to have uh, a great year for for Red Star. I think his uh, he's back at his position uh, at the five, and I think his the way he rolls and he can shoot. Um, I think you see with you know like the Slovenian national team over over the summer his ability to uh, the way he rolls fast drawing attention to the defense and either he's going to have a dunk or you have great shooters like Gerdritis on the backside that he, uh, you have Teo Dosic, Napier, like, I think, I think he's going to do, do really well. Um, uh, I think another positive from, uh, uh, week one was to see guys bounce back from big injuries, um, and play so well guys like Keenan Evans, uh, coming off, coming off his injury and, uh, Laverne from, as well, both those guys. Uh, that that's great to see uh, to for them to come back and and play so well. I think uh, has to be great because I know that has to, uh, mentally and obviously physically, but mentally to get back on the court and, and do well has to be a great feeling. So hats off to those guys. All right. Well, two things before we go. Uh, your your team name is Yearly Dreamland. Very cooperative. Very good. Kudos for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I take. Uh, I think I took a. So I compete with like uh, I've always played with Sam Van Rossum from uh, Valencia, and he's back in Belgium now. Um, so I and the Cologne brothers, and I think uh, taking, you know, t- taking a little bit of grief uh, for uh, for our team not participating in Euroleague. Uh, I uh, did a little, tried my best to do a little play in words there. Yeah, well, my final question was going to be about that. You know, Dreamland Gran Canaria <laughs> it has a has a rare chance to repeat as uh, Eurocup champion, something that not many teams had the opportunity to do in in many years, mainly because the the yearly champion usually plays the Eurocup. But how much of a challenge? How much of a 
how much are you looking forward to well to go back to back and, and make history? Uh, we're obviously that would be that would be fantastic. Uh, it's October, just beginning of October, so we uh, we're still getting used to playing with one another. We uh, we're excited about the, the Euro Cup and ACB uh, getting started here, um, but it's. Uh, it's obviously going to be a, a tough challenge, but no, we're adjusting as a team. We have a lot of new guys. We, you know, due to our success last year, we had guys that uh, some of my former teammates are competing in the EuroLeague this year, which is really exciting. Guys like uh, Khalifa Diop for Gascogna and Oleg Kontorowski and Damian Inglis. Like those are uh, the three, three great, three great guys and, and players who uh, I'm wishing all, all the best, but no, yeah, we're, uh, we're adapting here and looking forward to the Euro Cup season, but it's uh, it's a long it's it's a long season. So hopefully we can uh, continue to get better and be healthy and playing our best basketball towards towards the end of the year. It's uh, it's going to be another competitive season. All right, well that's a wrap, uh, John. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, very good luck in not not only in the Euro Cup but also in the in the yearly <laughs> fantasy challenge. Uh, <laughs> I think the Euro Cup's a little more important, so uh, we'll uh, whatever happens in the fantasy. But uh, I appreciate you having me on. This is uh, this was fun, and uh, thanks again for having me. We may call you again, you know. So stay tuned. I, uh, absolutely. Well, I mean, we'll we'll see how my team does. I don't know if I don't know if people want my advice if, uh, if my team's not doing that well. well. well the maybe advice... maybe one of the Colombs or uh, Sammy would be might be better options. The advice is pretty clear. If you follow the game, it's it's pretty clear what you have to do this week. So we'll see. Uh, well, that's it. Thank you very much. And thank you, Fantasy Managers, for joining us this week. Uh, see you next week. Bye.